What we have here is a French LRAC 50. A 50 denotes the year 1950. This is a post-World War II anti-tank bazooka, basically, or rocket launcher, however you want to say it. Fires a 73 millimeter rocket, which can penetrate 11 inches of rolled steel armor at a 90 degree angle impact. This one, of course, if you look closely, you can see has a hole cut in the side. So this is per BATF E regulations. So you don't go to jail for 10 years for having this thing without tax stamp. You can reactivate it with a lengthy paperwork and metal work process, but I'm not going to do that because I have no idea where I'd even source real rockets. This one, if you can't tell, is an inert example for display purposes only. So how it works is you basically shove this in the rear and then you actuate the trigger. There's a safety mechanism, it's a little hard to see the lighting, but you squeeze the back and then the trigger activates. Then you release the back to reset the trigger, then you can squeeze again. That's how that works basically. There's an optic. Let's see if we can get that in the camera view. That's yeah, gonna be very difficult. Let's see if I can get that a little better view here. Let's see. Very difficult to see, but there's a little arrow in there. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Little arrow up there. It's a little foggy because it's, well, probably over 70 years old. I'm not sure if this one's from 1950, but it's around that time, maybe 50 or after, a little bit after. You can adjust the optics with the mechanism on the side. There's the face plate here. This is the last rocket I Launcher, I believe, that had a face shield. They were a little more secure after that. This one has the sling. There's also a steel rod welded back here. A little hard to see. It's another thing to make our government happy. There are some people that reactivate these with the right paperwork. I've gone through that paperwork before in different items, and I don't particularly see the the need for me, for my purposes. Um, it's not, it would be cool, but it's really not worth the uh, expense and time. I'd rather put that money towards different projects like a machine gun or a short barreled rifle like I had before. So like I said before, we have a 73 millimeter rocket. And this one, actually, I have a bag for it too. Pretty basic. You can tell it's made to accommodate that large shield. Pretty simple. I figured, you know, I made the investment of buying one of these. I might as well have the whole kit. You know, they got the carrying case, the inner rocket, and the sling. Made a previous video kind of teasing this. I wish I could do a full review where I'd be shooting it, but, you know, that right evades me at the moment, so. I have not seen another video on YouTube of this thing. So, thought I'd share the knowledge and the item. Definitely a museum piece. I keep it in the corner there, you can see where it sat. But for the purpose of the video, I thought it'd be easier to show it on this glass table. Some of you guessed it a very close. The German World War II bazooka resembles this. In fact, the French probably expanded on the German design. I mean, it looks almost the same cosmetically. So now you know, now we have a video of this thing on YouTube, the French LRAC anti-tank rocket launcher. 73 millimeter rocket, penetrate 11 inches of rolled steel at a 90 degree angle. So right now it probably wouldn't be as effective against modern tanks, but I certainly wouldn't want to be inside of a tank when this thing gets a, getting a direct blast against one. So thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.